Hello, welcome to the Keyence iX training module. Today we'll discuss how to connect an iX series sensor to an Allen Bradley PLC over Ethernet IP. By default, the iX has no Ethernet IP capabilities. To communicate between an iX and an Ethernet IP scanner, you will need a DLEP1 communication unit. This attaches to the right side of the main unit iX amplifier as seen in this picture. Once you have your iX amplifier and your DL unit connected, you'll have to connect both devices to the same network via Ethernet cable. In this example, I have my PC, iX, DL, and PLC all running to the same Ethernet switch to create a local network. This will allow us to alter settings on the iX using the iX Navigator software, as well as establish connection from the DL unit to the PLC. Before we connect using the Rockwell Logix Designer software, let's look at what we have to set in the iX Navigator software. I've already set up a simple program for us to use for this demonstration, but there are some settings we'll need to set in the software before we establish Ethernet IP communication. First, we'll go to Sensor Setup, and in Step 1, I'll select External Trigger so we can trigger the sensor from the PLC. Then we'll skip to Step 4, Output Assignment. Our list of outputs on this screen will correspond to 10 bits in the PLC labeled External Output. For example, we'll leave Output 1 as Total Status OK. This will correspond to the bit external output one in the PLC, turning that bit on when the iX determines an OK judgment. We can assign output two to tool one OK. This will correspond to the external output two bit in the PLC, turning that bit on when tool one gives an OK judgment. This applies to the rest of the outputs you set during this step. When we switch to the Logix Designer software, we'll see visually how this works. For now, I'll click Complete Settings to take us back to the main screen. On the main screen, there's one more setting we need to set, so we'll click Advanced Settings and then the Device tab. Then we'll go down to our Communication Unit DL Settings. Click Change next to Data Assignment and you'll see another Output Assignment window opens. These 15 outputs will correspond to the bits labeled Measurement Value 1 through 15 in the PLC. I'll set Output 1 to Tool 1 so that the bit Measurement Value 1 in the PLC will now display the measured value of Tool 1. Again, you'll see how this works when we switch over to the Logix Designer software. If you have an expansion unit connected, you can also click Main slash Expansion to select tools from that unit. For now, let's click OK and OK again. You may be asked to restart the DL unit, if so, cycle power to the device. That's all the settings in iX Navigator, so now let's head to our next step. The last step before establishing communication with our PLC is to set the IP address of our DLEP1. We'll do this using the key ENTS IP setting tool, but any IP setting software can generally be used. I'll click Scan Ethernet IP Devices then OK, and it will search the network for Ethernet devices. We see our DLEP1 is on the network, so we'll click that then click Set Up IP Address. My device already has an IP address, but if you're setting up your DL unit for the first time it will not. Simply assign it an IP address and select Start with Fixed IP Address then click OK. Now that we've set the device's IP, we can head to Logix Designer to establish communication. Today, we'll be connecting our iX to an Allen Bradley Compact Logix using the Rockwell Logix Designer software. There is an EDS file for the DLEP1 available on the KeyEnce website. However, we recommend setting up the unit as a generic Ethernet module, as this tends to be the best method for most customers. I've already started a new project, so now I can add my module. I'll right-click the Ethernet option under I.O. Configuration and click New Module. Next, I'll search for Generic Ethernet Module, select it, and click Create. We'll want to name our module DL underscore IX, which will match the tag file we import later. Next, we'll input the IP address we assigned our DL. Now we'll set our connection parameters. Set your assembly instance input to 100, output to 101, and configuration to 1. Set your input size to 42, output size to 2, and configuration size to 0. Also, make sure you have your communication format set to DINT. Now press OK. Change your RPI if necessary. 10 milliseconds will be fine for our purposes. Now I'll press OK and we've finished creating our module. Now it's time to import our tags. The tag file is available for download at the KeyEnce website. If you're watching on YouTube, the link is in the description. To import it, we'll click Tools, hover over Import, then click Tags and Logic Comments. Now we'll navigate to our tag file, select it, and click Import. 
Now that our tag file is imported, let's click controller tags to view what we've created. Expanding DLIXI data will show that the tags we've imported have been applied to the module we created. This is the data sent from the IX to the PLC. If we expand DLIXO data, we'll see the data we can send to the IX from the PLC. Now we can click the Who Active button, find our PLC, and click Download. Click Download again, and this will put us online with the PLC. Now I'll open IX Navigator and show you how we can turn on our trigger request bit to trigger the IX. The IX is waiting for a trigger, so we'll go to DLIX output data 00 and change the value to 1. You can see the IX accepts the trigger, and we are successfully communicating between our PLC and the sensor. Thank you for watching.